Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Master Division in the Winter Slopes Tournament. The video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic, so let's go. First and foremost, we're going to start off with having 5 bars of top spin, 2 bars of side spin to the right. It might look like we're going to go into the rough here, but due to the headwind and the compressed ball guideline, we're not going to do so. And we do need to put ourselves in a spot where we don't have to rely on having to go with that much overpower in this situation i'm going to play this one for nine rings so you can see that i'm coming up slightly in overpower so i'm just going to add a tiny tiny bit combined with having half a ball of curl outside the adjustment ring to the right now we do hit it great i'm going to be pushed a little bit too much to the right that i do yeah too much to the right that's we do want to achieve the thing that we do come up to the hill taking as a very nice little road and then roll down towards the pin now coming a little bit short a little bit too much to the right but this shot is going to be close many many times very tough to get in the hole in a consistent way uh, also before we go to hole number two do not forget to subscribe to the channel be a subscriber that there you can also hit that bell button then you will get a notification every time there is a live stream or a new video popping up also check out patreon.com slash golf clash tommy if you do want to get the updated text guides or maybe have a training session one-to-one -one with me so sign up there and uh, let's get to it so our opponent go with a dead ball and you know you can play with a power four ball if you want to i play with a kingmaker as i do not want to spend a dead ball or a power four ball if it's not absolutely necessary so you're going to see me in this playthrough playing with i would say I don't think I use any power 4 ball at all. I think I use only power 3 and then maybe a little bit more wind resistance ball as well when it comes to playing the par 3s. Especially one of the par 3s. So, get it in, take the birdie, and then we're going to focus on hole number 2. Hole number 2, it's a must eagle. And here I'm going to show you a way uh, where we are going to play this one with the, a mummy ball or a or a kingmaker ball it's those two that i want to play with because i do want to have a power three ball because that is where my reference is uh, that is what my references are building on so i have like this if i am having a wind that is eight miles per hour or below then i'm going to go with a tiny tiny bit of uh, overpower if i do have a wind that is around nine then i'm not going to use any overpower whatsoever i'm not going to remove any rings either if i do have like 10 10 plus then i'm going to re uh, going to remove four rings with my adjustment you're going to see here now i'm going to have a 10.9 with the, uh with a uh, yeah a kingmaker i remove and i take then a mummy ball you can see we do only have two and a half bar uh, side spin to the right and you can see i'm just aiming for the spot there to the left so i'm not going to bounce in the rough and then roll out i think this is so much easier but it will need to have a lot of backspin you can see here i'm putting it in just to be in uh, that normal speed i'm not going any overpower not subtracting anything just using the ball outside uh, to the right there around one and a half ball if you do not have an apocalypse level 6 or apocalypse level 7 then i would suggest that you play with the thor's hammer if you have it in level 6 or 7 if you would and be having that and you don't have that backspin to work with then you go with the bounce before the rough bounce it in the rough on top there have in mind that you only use two bars of top spin for that rough bump and then you aim so the second bounce should be in the beginning of the rough otherwise you're going to come in too hot and you're going to miss uh, hole number three uh, first we need to play with an over adjustment of 20 percent this is going to be a very tough hole as for it's very hard to get the rings and the adjustment right as we cannot see it properly when it comes to the bullseye our opponent here is adjusting a little uh, uh, adjusting in a good way turning the screen around so the trees aren't going to be that big of a problem and also the aerial view very high up so we do see that's the best spot on we can get now in this case gets it perfectly coming in uh, right there to the right of the bunker and of course that's the ultimate position there 
The thing that we do need to have in mind here that's, is that we do want to stay away from the rough and from the sand. If we do get into the rough or into the sand, we have no chance whatsoever to reach for the green in two. And then we need to play for a wedge and then hopefully get it in with a wedge. I'm playing here with Apocalypse level 6. Play with 6 bars of top spin. You can play as low as for 5.5. Uh, and there I would have the cutoff there. Now I'm using just here, I, it's hard to see, but I'm adjusting for 20%. And when I'm having wind below 11, I play with a tiny, tiny bit of curl to the right, not much. If I would be in that case having 11 plus, then I wouldn't be going with any curl whatsoever. Getting it just straight dead center, perfect, and the speed is also perfect because the top spin there could potentially put ourselves very much behind the trees, and that would cause a big problem. So we do need the ball to stop. That's why we're not using. Let's say you have an apocalypse level seven, then you don't use max top spin, then it will roll too far, and that's going to be a very tough opportunity for you to get in the hole. Now shot number two. Here <coughs> we're going to miss a lot to the right but we are going to tweak that one a little bit and the tweak we're going to do is that we're going to tweak with the side spin the thing is here is that if we do adjust too much to the left with our landing position we're going to have the trees that are cutting away our ball guideline that is always going to be pretty dangerous when we do take our shot the best case scenario would be that we see the ball guideline all the time that is some case not going to be the fact as then we go need to go with a little bit of counter curl and just get it to green. But if we do get as uh, good to the right as possible, so we do have as an open view, as our opponent did have, then we don't need to go with counter curl. Then we can just adjust and then we take our shot. For R then, we uh, I'm going to first by uh, start by looking at the right part of the fairway that we're aiming for. Here in this example I'm using 5 bars of side spin and, and half a bar of back spin. I would suggest that you remove that, I, I suggest you play with 3.5 bar side spin to the right and still half a bar of side spin. You can see I'm aiming for the top right here as to give myself as much room as possible so I'm not having the trees in play. I'm still not having the trees in play, which is absolutely awesome. That will make for a perfect adjustment. Then slightly, slightly counter curl to the left to just let my ball straighten it up a little bit. But you can see I'm still coming in too much to the right. And that's why we're going to remove some uh, side spins. So we're only going to go with three and a half bar side spins, still half a bar of back spin. Then we're going to be close and it would be awesome to drop an albatross on hole number three. And now when we're done with hole number three, we're going to start prepare for hole number four. And hole number four, now I'm going to show you a very weird uh, adjustment here. I would say weird as I don't know that, uh, I don't know if many are playing the rough bump. And uh, I'm going to aim straight at the hole in this example here. And I'm going to play this shot for one on one minus one ring. So with 12.3, uh, in wind, we're going to play 11.3 rings. And I'm going with max side spin to the left with a kingmaker ball, so I'm really pushing it as much to the left as possible, combined with two and a half bar top spin. Three will be too much, uh, two will be too little, so two and a half bar uh, top spin. So we get it in there, we get the rough bump, and we just missed it there to the left. But you can see this, the speed is absolutely perfect. We're not going to go, come in too hard, we're not going to go short, but that was so extremely close. But that would be a, some, uh, a hole that I would love to drop that shot. That would be absolutely awesome. Where I would say I, I already dropped that shot on stream with the same type of adjustments. I know it works, it's not something that we're just going to do one time and then we hope it, it's working. But it's always nice to see a rough bump in this. I can't uh, in, in this way believe, like if we say this adjustment here, bouncing here, it gets so inconsistent. When they have changed the fairway there in the bottom, then it's so much easier to go with the rough bump uh, instead. As the ball, we kind of have a, a pretty nice roll towards, um, towards the pin. 
So, and I'm not saying this uh, way to play is wrong. Uh, I do believe that going for this bounce is going to give you a pretty inconsistent one. And you're going to have to rely on the first and the second bounce to be good for you. So you can get it in the hole. But in the end, it's going to be a birdie hole as mo uh, as uh, for many, many. If you can get a hole in one, every I'm going to be super happy. Hole number five. Uh, hole number five here uh, is going to give myself uh, a pretty what can i say it, it's it's a fun hole i like this hole and there is one thing that we really need to think about when we're playing this hole i'm going to play it with a kingmaker we can play it with a dead ball we can play it with um, like a power four ball was my um thought there K kingmaker x could be good as well as for the extra side spin so, but here in this example, I'm playing with uh, Apocalypse Level 6 and a Kingmaker Ball. I'm going to go with, as you can see here, 5 bars of top spin and max side spin to the right. I'm going to look for having my landing position using, in this case, the red ring as a reference here. And then I'm going to adjust down the regular numbers that I should be doing. And... Uh, then we're going to pull up the target into max range of our club, like from plus 11 to plus 16. Then we're going to go max curl and max overpower. And I will be doing the exact same shot with a dead ball or a kingmaker X that gives us a power 4. We bounce here very nicely on the fairway, bouncing over, and with the curl and the side spin, we're going to be dead center, which is absolutely perfect. The thing that I do with my adjustment as well is that I do add 10 percent to my adjustment due to the slight downhill approach uh, for for our drive the thing is that we when we come in this situation if we do find ourselves with a possibility to rough bump with our long iron i would suggest that we do that the problem is that we do have is that when we do adjust so we get the aiming point up to the green then we're going to gain some distance in terms even though we were adjust uh, as what the arrow says and then we, it's going to happen the thing um that our opponent did but we're going to bounce over the whole place as we are just we have been playing with topspin instead in this case with backspin so we need to pull down the target one ring if we do adjust up there to be able to hit the rough so if we would be gaining more distance let's say we would be playing with a short iron then we do have the option if we do have the thorn to go with a max backspin approach and uh, use the ball guideline to bounce on the green make it fall back down for an albatross or we go for the rough bump there as well you can see here now when i'm adjusting here it is very important that when i'm adjusting i'm adjusting for minimum numbers and you can see i'm just slightly getting up there but let's say if you would be getting up there even further you need to move back your target a ring so you not find yourself in a way where you miss now that was a lousy shot but i hope you get my point so we're not messing it up there so now it's time to pull out a berserker ball or a snow globe ball I would say that this is a risky adjustment. It's not often that I show a way to go for the hook shot. Uh, as, but I do believe on this one, with this wind, that we kind of need to go for it. Uh, if we would be having wind right to left, I might would be just putting myself in forward to go with a straight tailwind approach for the second shot. But now, as we are playing with this type of tailwind, then I'm going to try to gain as much yards with my drive as possible. So I put myself in either the rough or the sand or on the fairway very close to the green. So it basically come down to am I going to hit it perfect or not to get it in the hole. Our opponent going left then yeah, I don't blame uh, he or she for doing so. Um, but um, I do believe it's still going to be a tough adjustment from distance. So we're going to start by pulling out the berserker and we're going to use... Um, as you can see here, I'm going to use that little piece of tree that covers the yellow line. Pause it, zoom in if you have a hard time to see. That is going to be my reference point for my drive. If I'm going to have 15.5 as I'm having now, then I'm going to move my target um, to move my target a little bit uh, more so to the right as we do have 
at uh, that much tailwind. Uh, in this case as well, with having like 14, 13 miles per hour, we can go max overpower. We don't have to reduce a little bit. But now I did reduce just a tiny little bit, try to gain around 75 to 80 in, um, in overpower. And I just hit the fairway, came in too much there, so I need to adjust my landing point. But here from this position is a rough iron shot that is not easy, but it's definitely a possibility to get in the hole. And choosing between a long range approach with our, my wood club or with, um, with that drive, I'm going to go with that drive every single time. So and the thing that I want to do, the best way of course is to bounce and to get it to bounce in the rough to roll out onto the fairway and then we have a wedge for the pin. Also if we could like stay away from the bunker in some sort, go short in the rough just before the bunker, that, that would be way better for me than getting into the sand. I absolutely uh, despise the, side, the sand. So it's a great. I'm going to bounce here on the platform, going a little bit short and go into the sand. Um, I guess he's laughing at himself for that slight mis miscalculation, I would say. And now, in the end, this is a, like a very... Not a, not a fun uh, rough iron shot to do, as it's a very tough one from that distance. This long distance then is, of course, a little bit portion of luck to get it in. If we can gain like a 15... 20 yards more there have a very short one then it would be still in a range that i would feel very very comfortable with go with three rings from that range and uh, then going to take my shot and hope it's going to go in but i do hit this ball great great minor great left but also aiming a little bit wrong so i'm coming in pretty nicely but I should be moving my target back a tiny, tiny little bit. But hard to say, you know. Uh, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to play with a Santa ball here. And I'm going to play with the quarterback. The thing is here, though, is that we have a quarterback and we have a Santa ball. So we're just going to be in the cutoff there. I do suggest that you do play with the sniper as your wood club. Not because you're going to use it. It's because then you, can, then you will have a firm line. So you don't have to try to find the bottom part of the... the the quarterback like the minimum distance i'm aiming with a yellow ring just there by the rough i'm using two bar side spin to the right and max backspin which is going to be a little bit more than six bars and you can see here now with this shot is that it's a nice shot but coming in a little bit too hot and the thing that we do want to do here is that we do want to use a club that has a little bit more backspin which is going to be the rocket and i'm also going to take away the side spin and just go play and rely on that the bounce is going to push me to the right but that is going to be the the way that i'm going to play this hole i do feel that going further up is going to be a problem sure if you don't have any santa balls or uh, power zero balls uh, or power one balls with some wind resistance then sure then you will have to play with the rocket a little bit further up try to bounce on the fringe and then i would suggest you play with a kingmaker to get as much headwind as possible so you do get the ball to stop uh, even though uh, with a max backspin rocket and uh, that with a 10, 11, 12 miles per hour in headwind, it could actually go too short, even though the ball guy line will show as it's going to go way long. So, it's nevertheless, it's a very tough par 3. And be happy with a birdie. Don't see this, like, see it if I'm, uh, as an only one opportunity if you feel like it but i would say that the majority of the players will be making a birdie or it will be in some cases a couple of pars um but um yeah best case scenario we're going to see ourselves um uh, be close or maybe getting it in hole number eight here is only one approach that i'm going to play for that is going to be the rough bump but i'm going to actually go for uh, getting over to the uh, fairway on the right and the thing that we do want to achieve there is to have a minimum uh, long iron shot like uh, if I would be choosing I don't want to play with the uh, with a short iron as we are not going to have enough topspin so we do want the ball to stop as well and that's going to be tough and we're going to be uh, it's going to be 
a little bit lucky if we're going to uh, stop when we want to or it's going to be unlucky if we doesn't stop too it's very hard to control when we're going to go full blast over power and max top spin in the rough here i could suggest to you that you would be playing with a power four ball here if you have some uh, here in this example i'm going to play with a kingmaker to show that it's possible of course to be done and you go with max top spin and you're going to over adjust this shot 15 percent very important so max top spin and then a couple of bars side spin to the right as well and i would say move back your target a little bit you don't need to aim that high but in the end you're still going to go with max top spin no uh, max top spin and max over power no uh, no matter where you're going to adjust and then we're going to want to be a little bit lucky that we do get the ball to stop minor great right and you can hit great right with great left won't be a problem for you here we bounce but you can see we're getting uh, a little bit uh, further roll than we wanted to and uh, and um, that is definitely going to be something that we do need to find a way i'm not saying it's easy to but we need to find a way for uh, for the ball to stop a little bit sooner as now we're going to have uh, I would say we are going to be in between clubs and that is going to mess up more than it's going to help Our opponent go with the rough iron here to the left and um, And of course with the rough iron here is it's not going to be easy and it is very bumpy that's also the reason i'm going with rough bump i believe it's very bumpy we want to where we want to play and then uh, then rough bump feels more consistent so now in this example i'm going to play with my short iron i would love for you to take a look when i played this hole on stream where i'm actually playing with my long iron as i do want to do but now being uh, so much in between clubs i'm going to use four and a half bar top spin aim straight as a whole but the thing is here that and also good to show even though it pains me to show a kind of a lousy result that this shot go don't trust the ball guideline you do want the ball guideline to be way past the pin i would say two two almost three squares past the pin you want the ball guideline to be because even though we are straight at the pin with this shot this shot is going to go short due to headwind you can see i'm bouncing in here but a ball basically dies i mean just getting to green i'm going to get the birdie though but you can see how short it got and it kind of like doesn't really make sense when we hit and aim the same spot that we want to hit so uh, in the end you do want to have a short arm with more top spin if you're going to go with that adjustment or you want to make sure that the ball is stopping sooner for those of you that has an apoc 6 or an apoc 5 won't be having any problem but for you guys that do have an apoc 6 uh, sorry apoc 7 uh, maybe need to take off a bar or two top spin to just make sure that you're going to stop short hole number nine now we're going to play again with a little crazy adjustment we are going to go full blast hook mode and um, again i normally don't show uh, approaches like that if i don't feel that we are gaining a much bigger advantage by doing so than uh than um than a normal drive but in this case i'm not going to show this one i can't remember that one so it was a little bit bad of me uh, but I'm actually going to just play a very conservative and overpowered drive. So we take out, first and foremost, we have a Berserker ball. We have 16 miles per hour. Make sure that you're going to have above 15 in miles per hour if you're going to play this shot. You need the top spin as you do have on the Apocalypse as well. And then I'm going to aim up for just rough bump it out onto the fairway. And the thing that I was talking about uh, the hook is that the hook is is on its way to be really dialed in from the community so make sure that you take a look at streams any other videos to see if that is going to be helpful for you i'm talking specifically to master now as we could in in a very in with a perfect wind with a perfect shot could gain a lot of yards and have almost i would have to say a short iron or or maybe a wedge to the pin 
uh, from very short range. And then it's a dunk attempt, and that I do love. I really like this hole in terms of dunking. Our opponent here is not having enough distance as for using a ball with power zero. So, and that is something that you also, of course, have to have in mind. You can't go with a power zero ball. That, even though this drive was good, if it would be a power three ball, it wouldn't be necessary to use that much overpower in this situation. It's it perfect though, but it looks like it's coming in too much to the right. See? Yeah. Too much to the right and then too short. And for us here, when we are on the fairway, I'm going to try to do a rough bump, but I messed the adjustment up big time. And the only thing that I will have to say uh, with this shot is that you decide yourself how you want to play with. The thing that I'm going to do, uh, like for the next one, is that I'm going to pick the Guardian as a club and go with a max backspin approach directly on the green instead of trying to rough bump or do something that I honestly haven't tried that many times before. So, and the backspin with the Guardian will definitely help. And as uh, we are taking this shot, which is not going to be uh, helpful uh, more than that we are over adjusting it, is that I would really like to hear if you do have any questions, make them in a comment in the comment section below. Uh, in the end, if you do want to get updated text guides, uh, check out patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel as well. The video here is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic, so I want to wish you the best of luck in the Winter Slopes Tournament.